Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Rosin, and uh, today we we'll talk about introduction into praxis. Today's discussion will cover the background information into praxis, material model and parameters that are available for our simulation, drainage type, load type, construction phases, and their model conditions. We know our praxis is a powerful uh, final element package which is intended to model uh, geotechnical engineering uh, problems uh, and rock mechanics. It can be applied on a uh, range of applications such as excavation, embankment, foundation, tunneling. The two pictures at the bottom here shows an example of two simulations that were completed within Praxis. The first one being the consolidation analysis on that double drainage. Second one is a shallow foundation analysis where the foundation is uh, the surface of the soil and it has cavity which is represent the void. Some of the key benefits uh, in the structural mode you can you have structural elements like pipes, anchor, and geotester. It gives you a variety of elements which you can use to model uh, different types of soil mechanics problems. And they have a uh, various material model which is used to simulate different geotechnical problems, which we discuss in the following slide. This table shows a list of material model with your parameters. We know that soil and rock tend to behave in a highly nonlinear uh, way on the load. This nonlinear stress strain behavior can be modeled at several levels of sophistication. Plaxis supports different models to simulate the behavior of soil, and these different models are shown in this table on the screen. As we can see, for example, we have this linear el elastic model. It uses the Hooke's law of isotropy linear elasticity, and it is primarily used to model stiff soil, stiff structures in soil, and the material you will need is your models and process ratio. So this simply means that if you want to model a stiff structure using the linear elastic, just ensure you have these two parameters available. Under the morph column, uh, it is a elastic perfectly, uh, elastic perfectly plastic model with a constant average stiffness. And with that constant average stiffness, the combination is relatively fast. And the, material, and the parameters you will need for this model are here. If you have the friction, the latency, or the cohesion. In addition, with the Young's modulus and void uh, Poisson's ratio, and similar with the hardening and the hardening subsoil model, it tells you um, their benefits here and the parameters that is needed. And for further information regarding some of these parameters, you can refer back to the process manual. Continuation of the material model here: you have a soft soil model. And this is used to simulate normally consolidated clay and peat, and it investigates primarily the primary compression of your soil. And these are the models, whereas the creep model looks at the primary and secondary part of the compression. The modified cam clay looks at the critical state of the normally consolidated clay, and it assumes a logarithmic relationship uh, between the void ratio and the effective mean. The last soil uh, model here looks at the deformation of soil structure, deformation and soil structure interaction. These are some models which selected from the passive reference manual, but these ones are mainly for soil um, modeling. There are other models to model rock, and if you want to do any rock simulation, please refer back to the reference manual, which will give you different type of material model with their parameters for rock mechanics. That plus we have different drainage type. In principle, all model parameters in plaxis are meant to represent effective soil response. That is a relationship between the stress and the strain associated with the soil skeleton. An important feature of the soil is the presence of poor water. Hence, poor water significantly influences the time dependent response. Hence, plaxis can I can investigate the long term and the short term. Uh, behavior of your soil. The long term here we represent by the drain, the short term represent by the untrained type behavior. On that drain, you have no excess pressure generated. 
and looks at dry soil and uh, look at soil with full drainage with, due to high permeability such as sand. So if you have a sand uh, sample and, it's, uh, and you want and you are not interested in the pore pressure, you will look at the drain uh, type of drainage. On that on drain, there are three different types of drain scenarios. Very in mind on drain we produce the pore water pressure, but they are one on drain condition which will not give you the pore water pressure which is on drain C. It only it looks at the on drain total stress, shear strength, but it will not look at the pore pressure. Hence, we're not receiving for concentration analysis. Whereas A and B, we look at the pore pressure, and the difference between them both is A looks at down the looks at the on drain effective stress. Excuse me. Excuse me. And on drain A, we look the look at the on drain effective stress with uh, the effective stiffness. Uh, Why the on drain B, we look the on drain effective stress. So these are available in plastic for you to select. So you select each on drain depending on your model type. We have different type of loading, static and dynamic. Uh, and the second column here gives you this, a screenshot of plastics of what um what process provides you for you to update so if you have a load then you can amend the load here but classes uh, automatically generate a unique one of the load so this will give you the static for the static load this is uh the screenshot of the plus so you tell us where you can input your values if you have the bending moment then you can input your bending moment there but in mind, this bending moment um, icon only comes on the static. On the some other loading, it will not appear. So if you have a bending moment and you are doing a, a line load or a dynamic load, it will not appear there. It will not appear on the static loading. So just so bear in mind. On the static loading, this also, this shows you what you what you can input. You have the amplitude, you put it there. You know it's harmonic, you can select it there, there will be a drop down and the other a signal. But this one shows you harmonic. Um, if you have the frequency, you can input in there. So this is one type of the loading. At the top here, it shows you another screenshot within plus. This logo here is what you use to create loading and it gives you the option to create either a point load or a line load. A point load, uh, as uh, previous slides, plus gives a default unit value. Uh, on that point load, uh, you want to add a negative load, which the negative, the negative sign here will represent a downward load. Whereas if you put a positive sign, the load will be applied with, um, horizontally to the soil. So, um, the negative, why the negative load here will represent a downward load. Uh, the line load will be uniform. You have the option to have a uniformly distributed load, a linear load, so perpendicular load. So we give you different options of how you want that line load to uh, to work on your model. And we just give you the option to put the value of your load, just like shown the previous slide. When you also want to create the load, also give you this other uh, icon as shown at the top here. It's so similar as the um, as create a load but in this icon you create displacement and the way you create this is similar to the way you create the load and they give you three options here that you create a point displacement or to create a line displacement and um, what the, the prescribed dis displacement does is it controls the displacement at a certain location um, this displacement and the load do do different work uh, the displacement here, if you use displacement in your model, it's not to give you any realistic behavior of your soil under loading. It's only going to control displacement within your sample. And you can also see that with this icon, also give you an option to create a contraction. You, you will use this if you have a tunnel and you want to uh, simulate an area loss around the tunnel line mm -hmm. or to apply contraction to a line in general. That is when you will use the third uh, icon create a contraction. Another benefit is uh, when it comes to your calculation process. Under your calculation process, you are using a construction stage, which we done in different phases. So these phases here represent your construction phase of your model. So let's say that we are having an embankment and we have different layers. So, so we are excavating the first layer, the second layer, as we are excavating in short. So let's say the initial phase is initial. 
phase one could be you are excavating the first bed of soil or the second one you are inserting let's say short um the fourth third stage will be you are you are excavating the second part of the soil so your third process this phase is tells you tells the stages in your construction process and uh, how you want it to calculate you can say that okay uh phase two which is the insertion of short which is where you insert your short you can step plus it to calculate it from the continuation of phase one which is when we excavate the first uh layer of of the soil so this is your consumption stage and how you um set it up is how you are doing your consumption of your particular model you are doing on this side here it just shows some conditions like condition that you want to have at each stage. Let's say at the first stage you want the excess pore pressure. So you will select the icon for the excess pore pressure. If you want water flow, you will select the icon for water flow at each of the phases. This is just what this on the side represents. You mentioned the previous slide, this model condition is under your calculation phase. What you want to obtain out of it, it depends at each phase. If you want uh, to look at climate, maybe at phase two, then you can set the climate but and this this is used for thermal calculation due to weather condition. So, if you want the climate, then you can select it at whichever phase you want it to investigate. The deformation, dynamic, groundwater flow, precipitation. If you want to look at precipitation at the first stage of the excavation of the soil, you can select precipitation under your calculation. And this tells you what it's, uh, it's going to do. With your precipitation, you need to specify a general recharge or infiltration value for that. So just to give you an idea of what will be required uh, under the model condition. You have a lot of them to select. Um, for consolidation, we will just uh, we select the poor pressure, which is what you are looking for to your calculation. So these are just additional things you will find uh, that if you select some some uh, person will require to add some additional parameters so it's good to bear in mind now we've went briefly on the, some basic um background into practices with some basic models type uh, calculation type these are the basic things to have in mind so that when we start doing some tutorials we will refer back to some of these models and some of these calculation phases and some of the um, con trainage conditions so that Having this in mind when doing our tutorials and um, using any type of model, it give, gives you an idea how to apply what we just discussed into various student problems. So what we are going to do next is go through some tutorials, applying what we just discussed into various uh, problems and uh, simulate probably all the different conditions. Thank you.